So that's where it comes in, oh, now they acting funny. Because they got a little bit, oh, oh, so you leveling up on us. Oh, so you can't hang with us no more. Oh, you got a new car now, you acting funny. No, it's not, I'm not acting funny. I just got to keep paying for this car. So I can't be on the phone with you all day talking about issues and problems because I got to solve somebody else's problem so they can pay me. What, what do wealthy people do and how do they think? All right, so this is just my prelogue to what I'm going to talk about. But I just want to give you some things about what wealthy people do. So we can just start getting the mindset of the wealthy. Wealthy people have, there's a mindset, okay? Um, wealth um, doesn't happen by chance. It's on purpose. Wealth has gotten by purpose, all right? And plans prosper. So you have to plan. So wealthy people plan to prosper. It doesn't just happen. Now, you know, it can be passed down. Um, people can inherit it, you know, and that kind of thing. So you can inherit wealth. But when you're talking about, like, first-generation wealth and there's no inheritance, there's no aunt leaving you a bucket of money or something, then it's planned. It's a planned event. And so it doesn't happen by chance. So if you don't have any plans for wealth, I'm not, now wealth and money are two different things. You can have plans to have some money. You can have some money today and not have no money tomorrow. But wealth we're talking about is an established way of living. It's wealth. It's a lifestyle. It's, a, it's where you say, I'm going to get to a place and I will never live below that ever again in my life. I am wealthy now. I'm not going back. And if I did happen to lose it all, I know how to get it all again because I understand how wealth works. Okay? So, wealth. So, they plan it. It's a planned event. So, you got to have a plan for wealth. You're sitting here today, and I know everybody in here has one because you showed up. You know, you showed up here today. You came. So, you plan to be wealthy because it's called the wealth accelerator. It's not called the health accelerator. It's not called the wholeness accelerator. It says what it is. It's the, we're talking about money, wealth. So the fact that you showed up, you, I know that it's in your plans to be wealthy. Okay? So today what we want to do is we just want to extend that plan. All right? The next thing wealthy people do is they use their time wisely. They spend time doing more productive activities that benefit them for the long haul. Okay? And so they do... They use their time wisely, preparing, you know, they use it networking, making connections, learning new skill sets. But what they don't do is waste a lot of time. And you'll notice that the more money that you start getting, the more, um, the more um, cautious you are about your time and the more guarded you are with your time. When you start getting more money, you don't just let people take all of your time, and you don't just hang out with everybody. So that's where it comes in, oh, now they acting funny. Because they got a little bit, oh, oh, so you leveling up on us. Oh, so you can't hang with us no more. Oh, you got a new car now, you acting funny. No, it's not. I'm not acting funny. I just got to keep paying for this car. So I can't be on the phone with you all day talking about issues and problems because I got to solve somebody else's problem so they can pay me. So you're not acting funny, you're just elevating. And that means that you have to guard your time. So wealthy people use their time wisely. The average person spends their time binging. You know, they binge on TV, they don't have time for anything. That you, you do, you, the, the people who say they don't have the most time are the people that have the least amount of money. <laughs> You don't have time for nothing. You don't have time to make a difference in your life. We all have the same 24 hours we're working with, but some people are getting rich in those 24 hours, and some people are staying broke. So you can't be napping all day, you know, chilling all day. You can't even be on social media all day, especially if you're not getting paid to be on it. You can't just be talking to people all day. You can't let everybody call you. Don't even check your DMs all day. Or your email all day. You have to turn some things off because you remember wealth is planned. Because you got to say, have some time to attend to your plan. Okay? So you use your time wisely. So I want you to think about today adjusting how you use your time, your 24 hours. 
because you're getting ready to attain a new level of wealth. As you leave out these doors, you're not going to leave out of here the same way you came in. You came in with one amount of money in your bank account, you're going to leave out of here, and by next week, you're going to start having a different amount of money in your bank account. You do what we say today, and you're going to start accumulating and accruing money instantly. Some of you might even make some money while you're in here on today. So you got to think about your time. So I want you to start thinking about when I leave here, how am I going to use my time, okay? Number two, the wealthy people, they stick to tried and true risk, okay? So let me say this because wealth is a risk. You're going to have to take some risk. So all of you that are scared of everything, you're not going to have nothing. You cannot be scared of everything, and everything is not a trick. Everything is not a game, okay? So the rich don't gamble, but they do make financial decisions that can be risky, all right? So things can be risky. They do their research, they do analysis, and then they determine which options are best for them, for their business, their financial needs. They weigh their pros and their cons, and then they go and take a calculated risk. They make financial decisions by asking themselves, will this bring me closer to my goal? Okay? So I have a goal. Is this going to bring me closer to my goal? Now, they do avoid frivolous risk, but they take risks. Now, here's the problem I have with a lot of the people I know. A lot of people I know will get an opportunity. And you're not going to get riches without opportunity. So you need to be praying and asking and and believing and, and saying and confessing and confirming for opportunities every day. You should be saying, God, open the door for opportunities for me because wealth is going to become, come to you by an opportunity. Okay? Now, here's the thing. Opportunities come and they go. So you have to snatch them when they come. But this is the people I know. I had people call me and ask me, some of my friends, some really close people, some people I thought were very intelligent. And they called and asked me, hey, Dr. Stacia, have you heard about the Susu? And I'm first of all like, tell me the name. How do you spell that? The Susu. No, I haven't heard about that. What is that? We all put our money in this pot. Okay. And we pass it on and we put it in and then eventually somebody gets the pot. I was like, do you know all the people putting the money in the pot? And they like, are you guys all in like a corporate group together? No, just random people. Where are you meeting from? Online? Now, some of y'all are looking funny because y'all done did it, but that's okay. Just keep, <laughs> just keep looking straight. Just keep looking straight. I'm going to talk about you still, but, don't act, but you don't have to know. You don't have to identify yourself, okay? So, okay, I'm going to put my money in. Girl, how much you putting in? I'm putting in 1000 5000 This money, okay, I put it in. And then you wait and roll around till your wheel come up, and then when it rolls on you, you get all the money in the pot. Then what happens, like, you guys, people got to put it in again? And then, they, and then you get the next part? Okay, okay. So anyway, some of my friends called, I said, I don't, and that doesn't make logical sense. That's not a calculated risk. That doesn't seem like it makes, you know, like it's going to come out right. All right, now, I said, but you know what? You can get some silver. What, what do I need silver for? I was like, oh, okay, like silver's an asset, you know, like, you know, like you can hedge your money with silver, like, you know, like, I was like, so that seems more calculated and less of a risk than your susu. But see, you got to wait. See, you know, that's not happening when the ball rolls around in 15 days. So I'm just saying that wealthy people think about the risk they take they do take calculated risk, and they make investments. They think them through, but they do things that make sense. Now, the average person will do a susu, but they'll ask you a million questions about why should I trade. Is trading real, and why we got to pay a fee for it, and who makes money? Now, don't you know that the whole world is live made because of trade? That's why we have the World Trade Center. That's why we have stock brokers. That's why you have hedge funds. So when you watch the news, y'all miss all that. <laughs> the daily analysis, what's going up, you miss all that. But you just hear about 
the ducks that ran into the sea or something like that. You know how, oh my God, the cat that got ran over. I'm sorry if you got a cat, but I'm just saying that, I mean, you, we, we get all into that, but we don't hear any of the things that we don't know. What, is trading real? You wouldn't be here if trading wasn't real. But now we're trying to get you on the big boy's game. And you're trying to, you act like that's a major risk, but you'll do a susu. Okay, so I'm just trying to get our minds right about how wealthy people think. Number three, they focus on generational wealth. They don't think just for today. They're looking to leave a legacy, income-producing business with sticking power. They start thinking about things like entrepreneurship. They get an entrepreneur's mindset. They think of some kind of business that can go on for years or either they can sell it or that can get them liquidity. Because sometimes your business just gives you liquidity. You're not necessarily knowing that the business itself can make you a lot of money, but a lot of times the business makes you money so that you have money to turn that money into assets. And assets is what creates wealth. So a lot of times you can't get into different things. You can't get into the silver game. You can't get into the uh, trading game. You can't even set up your, your, your uh, MetaTrace, your Coinbase. You can't, don't even have the funds to start certain things. You can't do binary. You don't have the 200 to get started because you don't have the extra funds. So a lot of people start their business. Their business profits them. They get extra funds. Then they take some of those extra funds, and they don't just spend them all on Nike gym shoes on the weekend. We don't spend them all at Carabas eating out. They take some of those extra funds and they go and take them and make them into investments. Now, here's the thing that I always ask people when they ask me a lot of these questions back. Not trying to be a smart aleck, but a lot of times I ask people when they're firing them questions back like they are smart, I ask them, you're asking all these questions about these investments, is this real and all this stuff. They, how, tell me how you're doing. How wealthy are you with all the smartness that you have and the way you're doing life. You're working a job, and you're going home, and you're going back the next day working the job, and you're going home. And you're going back the next day, and you're working the job, and you're going home. And then you go back the next day, and you're working the job, and you're going home. And you're the people that we see online that's so happy that it's Friday, because you finally get a two-day break. I can break any time I want to. But you're trying to get me to prove how smart I am. I think I'm smart enough to be able to go on vacation when I want, to buy what I want, to live where I want, to go where I want, to eat where I want, to drive what I want, to get up when I feel like getting up. I don't have to have an alarm clock. I just do because I want to stay on the schedule. I can go to bed late because I don't have to get back up at 6 a.m. the next morning because I am not dedicated, locked in to the man. Nobody can mandate anything about my life because I live free. Yes. And I'm trying to get you to financial freedom. But to get to financial freedom, you got to take down your smart blocks. Take down all those educated blocks that you got that got you with a minimum bank account with minimum money and minimum ways to live. You got to say, you know what? Let me take all this off, get rid of all ego, and listen to somebody that has already gone before me and got some money. Thank you.